What's up everybody, Alex here with some thrift store pickups. If you are new here and are a fan of video games, 80s and 90s toys, and or dinosaurs, be sure to click the subscribe button. And if you don't like any of that stuff, subscribe anyway, come on. All right, let's get into it. First off, got quite a few VHS this time around. At my local Savers, they had quite a bit of great 80s and 90s stuff for just 99 cents, plus I had 20% off. So first off, we have G.I. Joe the movie, of course the original animated film from, I believe that was 19, 1987. So there you go, 99 cents. And then I found three Denver the Last Dinosaur tapes. I absolutely loved this show as a kid, I am a big fan of dinosaurs, as you may know. And we got three different tapes here, so this one is just a self-titled Denver the Last Dinosaur, 99 cents. Denver the Last Dinosaur, Dino Star. And finally, Big Top Denver. Says it's all new circus fun. <laughs> and then, on a related note, this was a little bit later on, but Street Sharks. Quite the jawsome show, from what I can recall. And let's see, this was, okay, from 1995. So like I said, a little bit later. But still, really enjoyed that show as a kid. And then a few video game themed things. I found Mortal Kombat, the animated video, The Journey Begins. So it is apparently a combination of CG and in-game footage. Go one step beyond virtual reality with 3D animation like you've never seen before. Now, based on the little screenshots on the back there, I don't know that it's going to be all that impressive now, but still a cool find for 99 cents. And finally, definitely my favorite of the bunch, I got the Pokemon preview tape. It's a sneak preview at Pokemon. So this predates their original release of Pokemon Blue and Red. And I think this might have been given away to Nintendo Power subscribers. I... I know I had a ton of those other tapes. I don't recall getting this specific one, though. So very excited to get it for just 99 cents. Okay, continuing on with movies. Got a bunch of Blu-rays and DVDs. So first off, I found the BBC Earth Frozen Planet documentary. And it was tagged $1.99, but purple tags were half off. So it was 99 cents. And it's sealed! Insane. Plus it has a cool lenticular cover. I, I love lenticular stuff. At that same store, I also found Aqua Teen Hunger Force Season 7, sealed for $1.99. This was actually the one DVD set that I didn't own yet, so happy to find that. Then, let's see, I believe these were all from a couple different Goodwills. So I picked up a pair of sealed horror Blu-rays. I got the original Amityville Horror which is an amazing, amazing haunted house film, if you've never seen it before. You may have seen the remake with Ryan Reynolds. That one was actually pretty good, too, but nothing touches the original. And then also got John Carpenter's Christine, based on a uh, story by Stephen King. And this is also sealed. Then this was a total blind buy on my part, but it sounded kind of crazy. It's a film called Raw Force. And just based on that cover art alone, I was like, I gotta check this out. <laughs> it sounds like it's a martial arts film, but it's by a company called Vinegar Syndrome that releases a lot of really obscure stuff on Blu-ray. So I'm not going to pass that up for three bucks. Then a couple DVDs. I got another Alvin and the Chipmunks DVD to add to my growing collection. Uh, this would be the 80s series? Yeah, 1988. So this is the series I watched growing up. Then picked up both seasons, which from what I understand is the entire series, of a show called Nosferatu. So it's actually spelled N-O-S-4-A-2. Apparently it's based on a book, but it's something to do with vampires and... I don't know, it sounded interesting, and the entire series for six bucks, I'll give it a shot. Also, another blind buy here, but it sounded pretty good based on some quick reviews I scanned. It's a movie called Luna by, let's see, by the BBC, and this is also sealed. And it's 
from what I understand, some kind of like horror sci-fi type deal. I don't know. It looked really cool. And then probably the craziest movie find. I found the Super Mario Brothers movie. For $2.99 <laughs> at Savers. And it even has the slipcover. Uh, unfortunately, the digital code was used, but I, I don't care. It's streaming everywhere. I just wanted a physical copy, and here we go. Three bucks. Can't beat it. Okay, next, got a couple books. Got a Star Wars Galactic Adventures picture book. This was from Sparrow's Nest, so it was only 50 cents. And it's got some pretty cool original artwork. It basically covers the original trilogy. And let me jump to the end here. So my favorite has always been Return of the Jedi, but it has some cool speeder bikes. Haha. <laughs> yeah, 50 cents. Well worth it. And then at that same store, they have a bin of books near the register that say they're free. And they'll have a little tag that says zero. So I found Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the like, original picture book, for free. <laughs> uh, then in the Goodwill, this I had no idea existed. It's a choose-your-own-adventure book, but it's a Disney version of Snow White. So it's... You know, of course, tells the, the the story of the original movie, but it brings in this original character, and there's some kind of, like, different alternate endings. It's kind of neat. I, I've i loved these books, like, my whole life. I had no idea there were a, official Disney versions. So it says there's a few others. It says there's a Pinocchio, Dumbo, and Cinderella. Now I need to track those down. <laughs> Uh, next up, this is pretty funny. So this is We're Back, A Dinosaur Story, which, of course, is based on the movie. But the movie was based on a book. So we have a book based on a movie that was based on a book. I think this may have been written by Exhibit. No, just kidding. But anyway, <laughs> got this at Sparrow's Nest, and I think it was only a dollar. So loved the movie growing up. Why not get the picture book? One other thing from that same store, it's kind of just an interactive dinosaur pop-up book called Discoverology Dinosaurs, and it's got all these different, like, interactive things. There's some pop-ups, there's, like, little hidden panels and whatnot, but what sold me on it, other than loving dinosaurs, it is by an author named Dougal Dixon. So when I was a child, I had a book called The New Dinosaurs. And it was just the most mind-blowing dinosaur book I've ever seen. So it, it's basically what dinosaurs would have evolved into if they hadn't gone extinct. So there's all these really cool kind of hybrids and really interesting original designs. And not when I was a child, but later on, I learned that he created two additional books in that same vein about like alternate evolution... Uh, one being called After Man, so it's basically what animals would be on Earth after humankind went extinct. And then there's a, a follow-up book called Man After Man, and it's just really trippy, like, kind of alien-type creatures and stuff. They are incredible books, all majorly out of print and super expensive these days, but I'm very happy that I own all three, <laughs> and I will probably never give those up. But anyway, great author. I'll never pass up anything by him. And then finally, one final book that I just had to do. A Magic Eye poster book. This is enormous, but it was only a dollar. And it is complete. Like, it has every poster still in here. Uh, I think there were supposed to be eight total. Uh, so this shows the solution. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but yeah, I love Magic Eye stuff and... I mean, this is from 1994, so it's like an original one. And for a buck? Come on. Okay, let's see. Next, uh, let's do some toy bags. So I always take a look at these. If you saw my last video, I've scored some amazing vintage dinosaurs and Mario Kart Hot Wheels. Nothing that amazing this time, but still a couple cool things. First off, this bag was $2.99. We have a Moldorama of a Stegosaurus. So these would be the wax figures you would get at zoos or museums back in the day. I'm not sure if the uh, machines are still around. I've heard a lot of them have kind of broken down over time, which is understandable. But I uh, loved making these when I was a kid. And then I think there's one other cool thing here I wanted to show. There he is. 
So I noticed there's an itty bitty Munchlax Pokemon figure. I think it was probably a keychain or maybe like a phone strap or something. But a very cute, very detailed figure. I'm always going to pick up Pokemon stuff when I find it. And otherwise, it's just like some generic dinosaurs and stuff. But still, cool stuff for three bucks. Next one, uh, let's do this guy. So this was from a Savers, so that's $2.49. And we've got a couple cool 90s figures in here. So you probably saw already, let pull them out, we've got a Reptar from Rugrats. He is one of those, like, classic sparking Godzillas. So that's cool. Also, we have a Bendem figure of Dot from Animaniacs. Uh, this would be from the original toy line. It's from 1994. And then, uh, again, a couple of generic animals and whatnot, but this I thought was crazy. This guy is from Double Dragon, the animated series. So I'm not sure which character was, probably, what was his name, Billy? Billy Lee, maybe? But he's got this kind of fun, like, supposed to be a punch attack, I guess. It looks like he's just, like, <laughs> maybe at a club or something. I don't know. But still, I was really surprised to find that. Okay, and then two more bags. Um, let's see this guy. So this one was just $1.99. But we got one of these pretty cool 3D printed slug toys. I feel like these sell for about 8 or 10 bucks each. So that was cool. Got a cute little Mickey Mouse. We've got a little Charmander finger puppet. Got a very cool Maggie figurine uh, from The Simpsons, of course. And that is dated 1990, so that's an original one. And then finally, it's unfortunately missing the rubber on its tires for some reason, but this bag had the Super Mario plumber van from the new movie. So it's, again, a little dinged up, and I don't know, maybe the kid that owned it ripped off the tires for some reason. <laughs> but uh, this is like the, uh, the official Mattel 2022 toy, and I think it was like 10 bucks new. So, I mean, even without the tires, I'm happy to get it for <laughs> like under a buck. And finally, I got one last bag for $2.99, but this one had some good stuff. Got two little wind up dinosaurs. Got one of the little Grogu figurines. So, this one is him sitting in a Stormtrooper helmet. Got a very cool Apu figure from The Simpsons. It says, Quickie Mart, thank you, come again on a pumpkin. So, I think it was part of a Treehouse of Horror themed Burger King kids meal promotion ages ago and then finally this i couldn't believe this is a mcfarlane halo 3 brute figure or what would that be like brute's chieftain i think forgive me if that's wrong but very very cool very super detailed articulated figure i think he originally came with some sort of big hammer weapon unfortunately that wasn't at the store but just to get a cool figure like this for under a couple bucks. Awesome. Alright, uh, some other toys. Let's see. Got a William Shakespeare action figure <laughs> for $3.99. Uh, the card's pretty effed up, but I'm gonna open them anyway, so I really don't care. I, I really like these kind of historical figures. They're just kind of fun to pepper in with like the Marvel characters and whatnot. Then, this needs new batteries, but I thought this was hilarious. It's Henry the Talking Gnome. He was $1.99, so what this does, if you hold the button on his foot and then speak, it'll record whatever you say, and then it'll play it back in like a high-pitched little gnome voice. So, I, I thought that was too funny. For two bucks, I had to do it. Got some dinosaur stuff here. So I got another... Schleich T-Rex for $1.99. This, I think, is a recolor of the one that I got in the previous video. But still, very cool, very detailed figure. Got a Jurassic World Toro. 
from the Camp Cretaceous series. So he was $349 plus 20% off, but he's got all these different action features. So he'll like stick his neck out and chomp, and you can twist his head. And then it doesn't, it also makes noises. I, I took the batteries out. But if you push this button on top of his head, he'll close his eyes and make this kind of like, for lack of a better word, purring noise. It's kind of cool. <laughs> then continuing on with the dinosaur theme, got a Jurassic, I think this is actually from Jurassic World. It has the Jurassic Park branding, but it's a Raptor Chase RC Jeep. Unfortunately, it didn't have the remote, but it was $4.49. And basically uh, what happens is you drive it around and this raptor, I'll try to do it here, if you rotate this wheel, it'll look like its legs are running alongside the Jeep. And I think it like swings on this arm too, so it would attack the driver. But pretty cool toy. Okay, and then, uh, speaking of RC toys, I also found an RC Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. And that was only $349. Very cool, detailed toy. Um, fortunately, it I wasn't able to get it working yet. It does have some corrosion in the battery compartments, but I think I just need to clean it up a little better and it should be good to go. Then let's see, got a couple of cool Nintendo toys, actually. I found Princess Peach's Castle. This is the uh, Jax playset. That was just 99 cents. Uh, it is a little worse for wear. It's missing the doors and the stickers are all misaligned. But I actually have another one of these that is just missing the flags. So I figured pop the flags off of this one, put them on my good one that does have the doors and decent stickers, and I got a good one for under a couple bucks. <laughs> and this, I was shocked this was still there. So I went to my local Goodwill the other day and they're stuffed animal bin was almost empty which is kind of rare it's usually overflowing and there were just a couple things lying at the bottom so i was like i'll take a quick look and lying face down right in the center i found diddy kong <laughs> and it still has its tag this is the original bdna what do they call these Nin officially licensed nintendo collectibles beanbag characters so I had several of these as a kid. I had, uh, I think the original series was Mario, Donkey Kong, Bowser, and Yoshi, I want to say. And then they eventually made others like Toad and Wario and Luigi and Peach. But I don't think I ever got Diddy Kong. So I was like, oh my god! <laughs> and it was only 99 cents. So, outstanding. Very, very happy to find him. Then a few other toys here. First, I got an Alvin and the Chipmunks jigsaw puzzle. So this is, again, an original one, 1990. So it's got, like, the, the rendition of the Chipmunks that I'm familiar with. 99 cents. And I'm pretty sure it is complete. It's supposed to have 100 pieces. I counted 108. <laughs> I don't know. Then, also got this really cool building set. So it's, of course, not uh, official Legos, but it was only $1.99. And it's a T-Rex skeleton. And when I popped it open to make sure everything's in there, it's sealed. Brand new. Two bucks. Oh, and it glows in the dark. I mean, I was like, <laughs> sold. <laughs> and then this isn't really a card game, so to speak. But when I saw it, I had to buy it. I, I could not stop laughing. I found Miss Cleo's Tarot Power Deck. <laughs> Now, it was $2.99, which, again, I just I had to do it. These commercials cracked me up all the time when I was growing up. I think it started in, like, the very late 90s through the early 2000s. And if you're not familiar with her, she was this kind of scammer <laughs> that ran these infomercials late at night saying, like, Oh, call me now and get your free tarot card reading. And, you know, she would help you make decisions or, like, tell you if you're, oh, are you the father of this child or whatever. And it was all just, like, a big scam, but hilarious part of my childhood. So, had to get her tarot cards. <laughs> and then one final toy pickup from a thrift store that is just awesome. I found this Korean Mario Kart Wii Grand Prix Race set. So, 
I, I will open it up and show you in a second, but you, if you could see here, it was tagged to $3.99, but purple tags were half off, so I got this for $2. Kind of insane. So, show you the back. So, it's essentially just like a marble maze. Now, unfortunately, the actual marbles are missing, but it's still cool. Let me, let me pull it out here so you can see. Okay. Yeah, so it's this big, elaborate plastic maze. I think there's also a couple little, like, flags and stuff in the box there. But basically, you control everything with these little levers at the bottom. Whoop. <laughs> As I break it. Uh, there. So you can see it lifts up various little mechanisms throughout and... You just have to, like, get through, and it's essentially a race, because you have, I think you can have, what, maybe two? Yeah, two racing at the same time. But it's just so cool, and I don't know if any have actually sold for that much, but when I looked it up online, there's a couple listed on eBay for close to $100. I paid two. <laughs> so, pretty darn cool. Okay, so that is it for the thrifting stuff, but I did get a couple very, very cool things online, so let me show you those. On Amazon, I don't know why it was so cheap, but they had this really cool Jurassic World Triceratops toy, and it is huge. So it's normally, I think, $40, but they had it down to, like, 16 plus there was a coupon, so I got it for $12. That's just insanity. <laughs> And this, I feel like, is probably one of the best-looking Triceratops that they've released. And I, I feel like this one is pretty film-accurate. And, again, for $12, I'm not going to pass it up. <laughs> um, speaking of insanely underpriced toys, I got the NECA Gargoyles Hudson action figure. It's a super detailed, lots of accessories. I've been very casually collecting this line. I think I have maybe the first four that came out. I have Goliath, Thalog, Demona, and Bronx, and now Hudson. But they're all pretty expensive. They're in like the $30, $35 range. But I don't know why. Best Buy had Hudson on clearance for $6.99 with free shipping. <laughs> so I got him for $7.00. I, I was, couldn't believe it. I mean, I think it sold out within a few minutes of me ordering it, so I got really lucky. Now, they did, for some unknown reason, ship it in a bubble mailer, which is just stupid. So it does have a little bit of damage, but for $7, I don't care. <laughs> and then uh, one final toy pickup. I actually nabbed these on eBay, and I am just blown away by the quality. So, I learned in 2012, Toys R Us had an exclusive speeder bike set uh, from Star Wars, of course. And I love speeder bikes, and when I saw these, I immediately went to eBay to look for a good deal. And I found someone that had a pair of them for just over $20 each with free shipping. And I got them. So here, I'll just show you one, but this is easily the best speeder bike toy I have seen. It is just so insanely detailed. It has this awesome clear stand that makes it look like it's actually in flight. You can adjust basically every little part and accessory. The uh, Scout Troopers are super detailed and articulated. And also it came with a bunch of other accessories too. There's like some little tripod cannon and then uh, there are two blasters for each Scout Trooper. And they even have, uh, where is it, there's a little holster on their kind of calf that does fit the gun. I, I just didn't want to risk dropping them and get it lost on a couch or something, so <laughs> have them in the bag for now. But yeah, absolutely amazing addition to my speeder bike collection. And then finally, got some pretty cool video game and video game related stuff. So first, these are very tiny, so I will do my best to show them. These are Densetsu no Stafi, or the legendary Starfi, Keishi, or Erasers. So if you're not familiar with these games, we 
here in the U.S., we got the game The Legendary Starfy for Nintendo DS. And what a lot of people don't know is that is actually the fifth game in the series. The original trilogy was on Game Boy Advance, and then there was a Japan-only sequel on DS, and then finally the fifth game, which was finally localized in the U.S., and there's been nothing since, unfortunately. But anyway... I absolutely love this series, and I just kind of came across these by accident on eBay. So just to show you, it's essentially just a small replica of the game's box art. And then the actual cartridge is an eraser. But it has a sticker of the game's label, and then it actually has, hopefully you can see the detail, it has like engravings of all the Nintendo logo and like the maker and everything. It is just so cool. Now, I don't know if there is an eraser available for the third game, but if there is, I will definitely buy it at some point, because these games are amazing. I will likely be doing a video on the full series in the near future, so if you're interested in learning more about Starfy, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, moving on, some other games and things. First here, we have the Sora Amiibo at last. So finally, the Smash Brothers Amiibo collection is complete. And this, I'm wondering if this is going to be the final Amiibo ever. Because to my knowledge, or as of the time of filming this, Nintendo hasn't announced any new Amiibo in the near future for any of the new or upcoming games. And there's some speculation that whatever the new Nintendo console ends up being, it might not be backwards compatible with Amiibo. Time will tell. But anyway, very happy to get Sora. And then, speaking of Nintendo, we got some very cool Switch games. First off, I got Anonymous Code, the Steelbook Launch Edition. So it actually has a standard game case as well as the Steelbook. I grabbed this from Amazon. It dropped down to, I think it was about 20-25% off, and I had some gift cards, so I got it fairly cheap. And it had been selling out everywhere else, so I'm like, I just gotta do it. I gotta bite the bullet and get it. Now, if you're not familiar with this game, it is the latest entry in the Science Adventure series, which encapsulates several different visual novels, uh, probably the most famous of which would be Stein's Gate. Now, I... I think it was about mm, two years ago, I finally sat down and gave Steins Gate a try, and I absolutely freaking loved it. <laughs> I played every single Steins Gate game on Steam, because the the original version of Steins Gate isn't really available on any modern consoles. It's just Steins Gate Elite, which is like a rework of the anime version, but I wanted to play the originals. So anyway... I 100% completed every single game on Steam, and now I'm going on to play the related games. So, the I, I believe the f first game in the series is Chaos, Chaos Head Noah, which I've already done one playthrough, but there's a ton of different endings, so I need to go back and finish that. And then there's a sequel to that called Chaos Child... And then there's Robotics Notes, and then this one. So I've got a little bit to do before I get to this, but wanted to get it before it sold out and skyrocketed in price. Next, got a game from Limited Run that I ordered ages ago. So uh, this is actually a set of two games. It's the Atari Recharge Collection, featuring Collections 1 and 2. So Collection 1 has Asteroids Recharged and Breakout Recharged. And Collection 2 has Black Widow Recharged and Centipede Recharged. So, I love Atari stuff. Happy it showed up. And then a final Switch game that I just learned about and had to get is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe plus the Booster Pack. So it's actually on cartridge, and it is an ESRB English version. Now, this from what I understand, only includes Waves 1 through 5 on cart, but it will download Wave 6 as an update. So it's not technically complete, but it's probably the most complete version we're going to get, especially here in the U.S., where they confirmed they're not going to release a bundled version. 
Uh, I think it only came out in Japan. And then this is actually the UAE version. So it's probably very hard to see, but it's marketed for the Middle East, Southeast Asia. But it is an NTSC or ESRB English version. I mean, the spine matches what you would see on a retail release here in the U.S. And it is completely in English. So I found out about this. I hopped on eBay and bought the cheapest phone I could find. So very excited. I have not played any of these Booster Pass courses. So I'm very excited to finally check them out. <laughs> and then, let's see. This, so it's not a video game, but definitely related to a video game. I got the Fatal Frame live action movie on Blu-ray. So this came out in Japan quite a while ago. I want to say like 2014. So 10 years ago. And it was finally put on Blu-ray and released here in the U.S. Uh, now it, it only has English subtitles. It is still entirely in Japanese. But this is my all-time favorite horror series. And I've been dying to see this movie. And I saw somebody mention it was on Amazon. So I just I had to get it. Because it seems like a lot of stuff is going out of print very fast these days. So if you see something kind of niche like this, I would jump on it. And then, uh, speaking of horror games, this I am very, very happy to finally own. It is the Biohazard Chronicles HD Selection. So this is a compilation of Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles and Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles, which originally released on Nintendo Wii, but then were ported to PlayStation 3. Now, here in the U.S., we only got them digitally, which, you know, of course is great to play, but I like to collect. And the game was released physically in Japan, which that version is very, very easy to find. It's maybe about, I don't know, roughly goes for about 30 to 40 bucks on eBay. Now, what I have here is the Asian version. And the reason I really wanted this one is the spine of both this slipcase as well as the game case itself are in English. So it's Biohazard Chronicles HD Selection. On the Japanese version, it is entirely in katakana, in Japanese. So this is still in Japanese, but the voices are in English. So it's still very enjoyable for native English speakers. And this set also came with a pair of booklets. So it's Wesker's Extra Report and the Dark Side Report. But unfortunately, these are entirely in Japanese. <laughs> so it might be a little tricky to read these. Um, I do have some lang Japanese language ability, but I'm not that great anymore. But anyway, I have had this as a saved search on eBay for years at this point. And it seems like whenever it gets listed, it's always like a couple hundred dollars, which I would never pay. So lo and behold, about a week or so ago, I get an email with the, the save search, and someone had listed it for $35 with free shipping. And I, boom, buy it now. <laughs> I was so freaking happy. And then it's here. It's real. Uh, again, it did get a little dinged up in transit, the, the slipcase anyway, but it was so cheap, I am just thrilled to finally own this. And then finally, something I am very excited to own, but unfortunately cannot enjoy. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the Deluxe Edition. So I pre-ordered this the day it went up at Best Buy and got the very cool exclusive steelbook as a free bonus. And I was under the impression that I would have a PS5 by the time this game came out. I don't. <laughs> I still don't have a PS5. I know, obviously, I could just go out and buy one, but they're expensive. And, like, I clearly spend my money on other things. So this just gets to look nice on my shelf for a little bit. I am very, very, very excited to play this at some point. <laughs> uh, I wish I could play it right now. Oh, well. Anyway, there you have it. Lots of very cool pickups. Lots of great stuff from the thrift stores. Lots of cool games from online. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about anything or you want to know a little bit more. 
If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed the video.